So I hope the crash course for describe image has blown your mind, and that's why you're here to have your mind blown once again. We will be going through more questions for describe image and further demonstrate how my philosophy is awesome and how you can apply it as well. Quick recap. You look at a picture for 25 seconds and then you start sobbing uncontrollably for the next 40. You are too stressed because not only should you pay attention to your fluency and pronunciation, but you are also looking after content, which can be very diverse and hard to max out. Thankfully, you have my permission to simplify your speech, be picky with your coverage, and have the freedom to go with or without a template. We also briefly discussed how you can come up with your own templates, and we will showcase some of my own today. Have I said anything about writing down your planned speech to help with your composure and delivery? I might have mentioned it like a dozen times in the crash course, so I will refrain myself from talking about it too much this episode. Nah, can't do it. Write it down, it is very important. But just like any capable teacher, I won't be satisfied just by showing you the easy way out. I hate to teach this question time for the agency because I can only talk about their templates, which I didn't design myself and are objectively revolting. But I do enjoy teaching this question time for my private tutoring because I get to freestyle. And that's what we will be doing today. I will give you a simplified answer that you can deliver yourself so long as you have a vocabulary over 50, and then I will give you a very complicated answer flexing my true prowess. I'm not doing this to show off. Well, not only to show off. The main purpose is to give you an idea of how different your answers can be when compared to another student, because the allowed range is quite substantial, but also to show off. Here comes the first question. Pause the video if you plan on first giving it a try yourself, because I will jump into discussion right away. This is a very simple line chart. As with any other image, remember to say the title. Let this be the first line of your template. I usually choose not to say the image type and just go with the picture shows blah blah blah, but feel free to swap out picture with something else more specific like line chart, diagram, or plot of data. For all future references, if you have a question regarding something else that has a similar degree of importance, my response will probably be, doesn't concern me, wing it. Let me give you a few examples. Should you mention the x and y axes in separate sentences, one sentence, or blend them in when talking about the exact numbers? It's your choice. Do you round the numbers or give the exact values? Who cares? You decide. Do you have to say in conclusion? Even if you find a conclusion, you can just say it without a pretext. Like, what's the point of those two words in conclusion? If you tell me you need this extra bit of time to organize the upcoming speech, then I'm all for it. But if you want to sound cool, then I'd say try something else. Either way, I won't be bothered to force each and every one of you into one monotonous way of speaking. Sing it if you like. No, I was kidding for the last one, don't sing. Everything else, eh, it's up to you. We cool? Let's talk about the stuff that are actually worth our time and energy to be discussed. Somewhere in your answer should mention the units of the numbers. For this particular question, I would like to hear millions at least once in your speech. As to whether you should add million to every number, again, it's up to you. My habit is to have a separate sentence that goes, the numbers are in millions, and never talk about it ever again. This is probably the most minimalistic approach you can take. Bottom line, say it at least once somewhere. Remember that for line charts, you should talk about the trend. This one is quite obvious. It has an increasing trend. But I'm not happy with such a plain description. If you want to get fancy, you can say it is an exponential growth. Then I will probably cover some numbers, especially in the beginning and at the end. That's about it. If you want to squeeze out a conclusion, don't go with the crap. In conclusion, the picture gives a lot of information if you can say, iTunes has become very popular after the first 150 weeks. It's really not that hard, is it? Here comes the minimalistic version. This is a line chart. It shows the iTunes purchase songs. The numbers are in millions. In the first week, the number is just one. In week 150, the number has grown to a thousand. It has an exponential growth, and iTunes is becoming more popular. This is what I tend to do when going with a simplistic approach. 
I don't do any relative or dependent clauses because usually they are the most complex to get right, especially when you are stressed out by the fact that you have only 25 seconds to prepare. I'd use simple sentences with very basic structures, and I focus more on perfecting the delivery. The most complicated stuff I have in this answer is just a compound sentence, basically just two sentences connected with AND. You really should be able to do this at the least. Not asking too much, right? Here is the flexing version. This line chart tracks the growth of iTunes for about 150 weeks. The plot shows the numbers of purchased songs, and they are in the millions. It started off slow at 1 million for the first week, but then soon exploded with an exponential growth. By the end of the period, it has reached more than a billion. The increase in popularity is very apparent. If you end up with something in between of those two answers, then I'll say you're almost certainly fine with content. As to the delivery regarding fluency and pronunciation, refer back to the speaking general and read aloud videos in the crash course. Doing some shameless self-promotion here, but it really will help you out. Next question. A simple bar chart that deserves a simple answer. The official practice test is quite old, and ever since it was released, the actual test has evolved quite a bit. If you think that if you take the test now and would we'll still end up with six simple images, oh, <laughs> you sweet innocent child. At least get the easy images right, and then we will worry about the scary ones later. They are still in the minority, so focus on the basics for now. Once again, you should mention the title. As to how you do it, I don't really care. Seriously, if you forgot about the title in the beginning, I would just suggest adding it to the end of your answer. Just make sure it's in there. If you insist on saying how 1998 is shown in green and 1999 is in orange, I don't mind at all. But if you say, in conclusion, this picture gives a lot of information, I will disown you as my student. This picture is a good example to talk about how you address the numbers. If you only have 5 bars in the chart, I would just mention all of them because 5 numbers are definitely manageable, and you certainly can give a rough estimate. For 1998, I might say the number is 57, 57.5, or 58. It really depends on the day of the week, how my crystal reacts to my salt, and which incense candle I choose to burn on that particular day. I'm a Pisces and the rising banana bread, so I go with the flow. I would also mention how the numbers seem to be generally decreasing as the years go by, with the exception of 2001. There goes your conclusion. Here is the simple answer. This is a bar chart. It shows the numbers for motor vehicle theft. The time goes from 1998 to 2002, and the numbers are per 100,000 people. In 1998, the number is 57. It drops to 54 in 1999 and 2000, but rises up in 2001. It drops once again in 2002, and it generally trends downward. You see how I rounded the numbers from 1998 to 2000, but downright skipped the last two. This is what I meant by having a choice over what to and not to say. In fact, there wouldn't be much of an issue if I just decided to drop some of the years entirely, because I'm a free-spirited Sagittarius. Another takeaway from this question is the fact that you really can repeat some sentence structures. Here is a better example. What's stopping you from saying, it drops to 53 in 1999, stays stable at 53 in 2000, and rises to 56 in 2001? If you can find some repeatable patterns that can be used in your answer, then just go with it. It might sound stupid, so you might want to add in a few other words to trick yourself into believing that it is actually better. Really, it makes no difference whatsoever. Here is the convoluted but far more impressive answer. This bar chart provides data about motor vehicle theft, which shows that the trend is largely decreasing except for 2001, going from 57 per 100,000 in 1998 to only 51 in 2002, suggesting better law enforcement, more widespread awareness of self-protection, and the general increase of wealth in the society, so that poverty drives fewer people down the road of committing petty theft. Yeah, I kind of flexed a bit too hard on this one. This is clearly an exaggeration, so don't ever feel the need to do this in the test. Not only did I add in a bunch of random speculation, I also made the whole thing one sentence. I mean, I don't think there are any rules saying that I can't do this, but why would you go through the trouble and risk everything, especially if you're not asked to do so? Here's the third picture. 
This is like a very simple case of how multiple types of images can be mixed together. You have some bars, and you have some lines. You talk about the bars, and you talk about the lines. You talk about the temperature, and you talk about the rainfall. You see how the maximum temperature is always above the minimum, however idiotic you might sound, just bring it up. Maybe also mention the fact that they are always very stable throughout the year. As for rainfall, you know what, for the sake of demonstrating how you can choose to not say something, I will not mention the numbers at all. We already have a lot to talk about, and I would still like to bring up the fact that rainfall is the highest in May to July, and lowest in October to December. Call it whatever you want, fluctuating sinusoidal, wavy, binomial distribution. Yeah, maybe not the last one, but you get the idea. Of course, you can also choose to focus more on the numbers instead of whatever mathematical term that brings back traumatizing memories. Here is the baby version. This is a bar chart and a line chart. It shows the rainfall and temperatures in a year. The temperatures are very stable. The maximum temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius, and the minimum temperature is about 25 degrees Celsius. The highest rainfall is in June at 280 millimeters. The lowest rainfall is in October at 25 millimeters. So I lied. I mentioned two of the numbers. Sue me. Pay attention to how I said the last two sentences. The highest slash lowest something is in somewhere at a number. This is my habit for talking about maximum or minimum values, and it happens to be very simple and concise. This is something that you should discover for yourself as your own template. For all later questions, if I ever have the need to talk about maxima or minima, this is one very easy way for me to phrase them. Here is the over-the-top version because I am a typical Capricorn, fancy and elegant. This chart summarizes temperature and rainfall for a specific region. Temperature values are very stable throughout the year with little to no fluctuation, ranging from 25 to 30 degrees Celsius for a typical day. As for rainfall, it is observed that the wet season lasts from March to August with heavy precipitation, and the dry season from October to January, showing drastic fluctuation in the 12 months. Chose to include some numbers for temperature, chose to drop the ones for rainfall. Do it your own way if you disagree with my choices, see if I care. Also, I dare you to make up a conclusion. Go ahead. Try me. Here's the next question. This picture is more like an illustration, still, not too complicated. It talks about the thinning of ice caps from 1958 to 1997. Hmm... I seem to have accidentally given away a free sentence. Whatever, use it if you like. This picture is very wordy, but in a good way. Why not just read the bottom sentence? Like, what's stopping you? Isn't this just easy content? And then, you mention the sad polar bear on the top and how the ice has thinned by 1.3 meters in 40 years, then you're pretty much done. Well, actually, I don't think talking about the polar bear would have made a big difference, so it's completely up to you. Also, if you haven't figured it out, don't read out courtesy Greta slash Unip. Like, I would genuinely worry about you if you think this is useful content. Here's the easy answer. This picture shows change in ice caps from 1958 to 1997. Arctic sea ice volume has decreased by 40% as compared with volumes 3 to 4 decades ago. The ice has become 1.3 meters thinner. This is a problem for the polar bears. I'm done. I'm not kidding. When I took the test, I had one or two very easy images, and one of them was like a pie chart with just four components. I literally finished my answer in around 15 seconds and just moved on to the next one. And by 15 seconds, I meant it would have only lasted 10 if I didn't slow down. If there's really not much stuff to talk about, just remember how you can finish a read aloud passage in less than 20 seconds if it is easy and short. Exactly the same case for describe image. You shouldn't panic for that read aloud piece, and you shouldn't panic for this describe image either. Can I not give a complex version for this question? Like, what's the point? It wouldn't be any different in terms of content anyway, just how I show off my vocabulary and manipulation of sentence structures. <sighs> Fine, I will do it because I'm a very nice Aquarius. Here it is. This picture illustrates the decrease in ice volumes from 1958 to 1997. 
the ice cap is thinning due to global warming, and in just three to four decades, the ice decreased in volume by a whopping 40%. The remaining ice cap has an average thickness of about 1.8 meters instead of three. This has become the most significant threat to polar bears as their natural habitats are being destroyed. There, I mentioned the polar bears again, even though it's probably not necessary. You happy? Note how I paraphrased that sentence in the picture, not because I had to, but I wanted to. Also, one more thing to point out. Global warming is definitely implied here since we're talking about melting ice, but truth be told, I don't think it's a big contributor to the content score. I'm not 100% sure, but even if you don't say it, everything else that you can see on the picture should give you a decent enough score by themselves. Here's the last one. So it's another bar chart. Only thing is, it's more like two bar charts being put side by side for comparison. This one actually has some vocabulary that might cause you guys some issues. The first is in the parentheses in the title. The word is eligible, with the stress in the front. The next will probably be wherever that place is in Sydney. This is definitely not important knowledge. At most, you just have to get the pronunciation, nothing more. In case if you haven't figured it out, it has a capital I in the front and is pronounced Illawarra. It's not Lalalawara. <laughs> If you are really struggling with it, may I suggest a simple fix? How about just don't say it? Like what benefit does it provide to forcefully include it? This is a good example for you to find a simple sentence that describes one of the categories and then just change out a few words and voila, you have another perfectly functioning sentence. Like this. For Southwest Sydney, age pension is 73% and disability pension is 7%. Are you ready for the magic to happen? Here is the next sentence. For Southeast Sydney, age pension is 65% and disability pension is 6%. Promise me that you can at least do this before actually booking the test. In fact, here, I'll show you another way. For age pension, the number is 73% in Southwest Sydney and 65% in Southeast Sydney. For disability pension, the number is 7% in Southwest Sydney and 6% in Southeast Sydney. Here's another dare. Talk like this to your examiner when taking IELTS. You win if the examiner doesn't facepalm or give you a 4 for speaking. Here is the simple answer, unlike the perfectionistic Virgo that I am. This is a bar chart. It shows the benefit recipient by health area in Sydney in 2004. The numbers are shown in percent of eligible population. For Southwest Sydney, age pension is 73% and disability pension is 7%. For Southeast Sydney, age pension is 65% and disability pension is 6%. For both pensions, the numbers are higher in Southwest Sydney. Remember why we're doing this simplistic version. It does the bare minimum to cover the important info, so your content will be quite good. In the meantime, because the speech is made really simple, you can have a much better control on your pronunciation and fluency. In fact, I encourage you guys to use these answer scripts that I have shown you in this video and just read them out loud like a read aloud question. Feel free to use the simplistic structures if you like or come up with something similar. So long as they do the job, I couldn't care less about anything else. Ready for my last flex? Here we go. This picture shows the benefit recipient by health area in Sydney with the numbers collected in 2004. Two areas are being examined, and for both age and disability pensions, Southwest Sydney slightly edges out Southeast Sydney and Illawarra by a few percentage points. It can be concluded that Southwest Sydney is the more desirable location for retired and handicapped individuals. Again, purely showing off here, no need to ever go for this level of complexity. You are encouraged to try, but if you fail miserably during the test, that's on you. Viewer discretion is advised. Try this at home, not in the test center. That'll be the last question for today, but I have a few more points I'd like to discuss before we end. I feel the need to do another walkthrough for this scrub image real soon, because what we cover today are definitely not representative of every type of image. Like I said before, the images you will run into nowadays are a bit more complicated than the ones we talked about. Next time, we will diversify a bit and look at other image types. But still, I feel like we have achieved what we plan to do for today. We discussed several images and we showcased what methods you can use to come up with a viable answer. 
I'm also quite happy with the fact that I got to show you guys some simple tricks to simplify your speech, so you are less likely to mess up your fluency and pronunciation while you still cover a decent range of content. If you still feel the need to go back to templates after all this, I completely understand. Just remember that flexibility is your friend, and don't rigidly follow templates to the point that it actually hurts you more than it helps. That'll be all for now. I'm sure we'll come back to this sometime in the not too distant future because it is a very broad question type that is quite hard to cover comprehensively. We will definitely try. And for now, please like, subscribe, and share with your peers if you find this helpful. Don't hesitate to email me any of your problems or prompts so we can further this conversation in a more interactive fashion. If you have more questions, ask me. Don't ask China. And I'll see you all next time.